jet black silky hair, colorful attires, and smoky eyes. From Bollywood to courts of Indian palaces and the open roads of Chandy Chowk, Indian women have acquired a distinct place as one of the most beautiful women on earth. And most of these women will give you pretty much the same answer. If you ask the secret behind their fab look, their grandma's beauty secrets, and their grandmas will credit their own grandmothers for the amazing beauty tips that have kept Indian women looking gorgeous over the generations. Welcome to Nutty History, and let's explore the old but still gold beauty secrets of ancient India that even you can use to glamour up. The very first time Europeans visited India, they got so crazy about the herbs and spices that their governments had to outlaw them for being addictive. India is quite naturally rich and diverse when it comes to flora, and that could be why organic makeup originated in India. Some of these cosmetics were so important for the Vedic period that the religious texts would consider them sacred and essential. Sindor and Kumkum, which are still used widely across India, have always been important cosmetic powders to apply on the forehead for Hindus. Sindor traditionally was created from ground red sandalwood, and Hindu males would apply it as tilak on their forehead after their daily prayers. Kumkum was created by mixing saffron or turmeric with camphor or lime and applied as a red dot or bindi by women folk. In modern times, Sindor is more commonly made of cheap but toxic vermilion ores, and bindi are more popular in the form of gum lace stickers rather than organic kumkum. Obviously, these substitutes are not good for your skin, so be careful of what you use. For the Vedic period, as well as modern Hinduism, the red color of prosperity isn't only for the forehead. Women of India love to dye their hands and their feet with red colorants made of beet and beetle leaves. Just like henna, which was introduced by Mughals in medieval times, the red dye, or alta, has been used for thousands of years to decorate hands with elegant and aesthetic art. The soles of the feet were dyed to look dazzling, but there also has been a religious purpose behind it. The freshly painted feet were meant to create auspicious footprints in the house. It's a belief in Hinduism that a pious woman's footprints bring prosperity to the home. But red was not the only color that enhanced Indian beauty. To this day, Indian women use black kajal to improve the look of their eyes by applying it to the waterline, eyelashes, and outer rims of their eyes. Yes, we are talking about organic eyeliner. Even men would rock kajal in the old days, but now it's way less popular. Kajal was made by dipping a muslin rag in a paste made of ground sandalwood burned in a lamp of castor oil. Ghee was later added for easier application and for its natural quality of preserving eyesight. India is a land of colors, and not just because they celebrate a festival of color called Holi. The colors come from the diversity in Indian looks and culture and the clothes they wear. In fact, indigo dyeing got its name because it originated in ancient India. The Indus Valley civilization was crafty with creating clothes out of cotton and silk and then dyeing them in various colors. Unlike the modern image of traditional clothing, where Indian women are covered from head to toe, ancient Indian women dress more conveniently to match the tropical weather. Their saris in ancient times wore more like short skirts, and they covered their torso with short tunics or adnis. Woolen clothes were also popular in northern parts of the Indus Valley civilization and Kashmir where the temperature was rather colder. There is a reason India was known as the Golden Bird back in the day. The land was prospering and wealthy, and people couldn't think of any reason to not show it off. Males and females both wore gold or silver jewelry in their ears, on their neck, on their fingers, and on their forearms. Anklets were quite popular among kids and women as well. This wealth was also the reason why India got invaded by foreigners so many times. Inhabitants of the Indus Valley civilization preferred to wear less but wear it in style. The hot weather demanded for lack of layers, but lots of experimentation. Woven cotton fabric was the most common clothing fabric, but the richer preferred to wear silk, which was obtained from the silkworm on the flax plants that they grew. Knee-length clothing was common among women who wore their skirts and blouses along with extensive jewelry. Bangles, earrings, beaded necklaces, and anklets were expected on every female resident. With the dawn of the Vedic era, 
minimalistic fashion became the trend. A single cloth draped around the body held by a pin on the shoulder and a belt on the waist called Mikala. Kings and nobility would fashion Mikala made of gold and silver to show off their wealth. Now some men and women preferred to wear Vasana only, a skirt-like cloth draped around the waist along with Mekala. During this period, upper nudity wasn't a matter of shame or ridicule, but encouraged. Common people would hardly cover their torso and carry a shawl-like garment, a teria, for wiping sweat or covering the head from harsh sunlight. Sari and dhoti are the most recognized Indian attire in modern times, and they came into existence in the Vedic period as well. As stitching became more common among northern India, Gagwacholi and Dupada were invented which are also quite common in modern India. Herbalism bloomed as legit medicine science back in ancient India, and it still exists by the name of Ayurveda. Even in present times, it is accepted as a legal alternative medicine in India and some other parts of the world. Ancient Indians found interesting uses for herbs and spices. They discovered medicinal uses of herbs for almost all sorts of ailments and grooming, including skin care. Even today, modern skincare products go about their herbs to renovate their products in the market by adding aloe vera or mango pulp for the 50th time in their creams and lotions. Ancient Indians had their own makeshift creams and paste to enrich their skin and get rid of skin-related issues. They even knew how to exfoliate. Cosmetic surgery is one of the modern medicine marvels which are hard to imagine to exist even two centuries ago. Just ask the elephant man. So, it is understandable if you lose it if somebody tells you that ancient Indians knew how to perform cosmetic surgery. Are you done laughing? Well, here's the thing. It was real. At least theoretically. A 6th century BC book called Sushrut Sanhita, written by ancient Indian physician Sushrut in the Sanskrit language, depicts in detail how to perform rhinoplasty. You know, the cosmetic surgery to reconstruct a nose. It also has drawings and descriptions of surgical instruments that the physician should use for such delicate surgeries. And the book does check out the accuracy of the procedure according to the modern science of osteopathy. Was there actual rhinoplasty happening back in ancient India? That is quite debatable. But if it was true, would you go under the knife of an Ayurvedic physician? Tell us in the comments. And thanks for watching Nutty History.